Hello and welcome to a second friend or farewell. The game where I basically just rate characters randomly that my friends have recommended to me. It's basically Smash or Pass, but like the platonic version. I, I had so much fun doing it the first time I asked even more of my friends for even more character recommendations. And we're starting off with Nico from One Shot! Yay! I do know this character. I love that game so much. Oh my gosh! Like Nico is like like the honorary third member of like the, the trio of like non-binary main characters of indie RPG game. Had, had like, a whole bunch of ridiculous controversy. It was like, no, they're not non-binary. It uh, they only use they them pronouns so that the player can headcan and whatever gender they are. And like the developers are like like no, I. I I gave this character neutral pronouns because they're a neutral character and it's just... I, I never understand that like controversy. It's like, you have like one million bazillion characters who are not non-binary. Like, it, it's not like you're starving for characters who aren't non-binary. Let us have one or two, okay? But yeah, out of that, like honorary trio of characters. Nico was always my favourite design, like seriously, like Frisk and Chris from Undertale and Deltarune, like, like they're cool and their co concepts are cool, but when you get down to it, the designs are kind of simple, they're really just like a regular normal human being who just has a stripy shirt. What I sort of personally prefer is, is the aesthetic that Nico has here. I guess that's, that's like my my favourite androgynous aesthetic is like super, super baggy floofy clothes. Well, but my favourite non-binary aesthetic is like being a gigantic cool monster but like <laughs> out of things that are actually achievable in real life baggy clothes awesome capes awesome and I just I love the way that they're, they're stylized to like the way their scarf is stylized with like the little tassels on the end like like almost like floating right off the scarf it's so cool and of course like just how well the color schemes go like, you never would have expected like brown and like navy blue would go so well together but it's this, this game is like, like a master of like really good and creative shading, which is really good because like there's so much focus on like light, light and darkness and the interplay of it in the in the whole like the story and the aesthetic and the environment. And everything. I just love it, and I really love how Nico's um hat incorporates a little space for their ears. It's just so cute and awesome. Love it. Absolutely great design. Absolutely friend, a, fr a fr friend, friend from beginning to end. And oh my gosh, the end of this game is very tear jerking. I was so happy when they released an update with like a, the the ultimate true ending, which answers like. Like loads of problems and let you have like an actual like good good ending for people a comparatively good ending for people and it, it was good and, and the, the switch port of this game is actually coming out soon and um it's i'm really interested in that actually because like this is a pc game and a lot of stuff in the gameplay all relied on like um meta stuff like like involving your computer and and, and files and stuff like that and it's really interesting that in the switch version they're emulated by literally like emulating a computer on a switch like you have this it's like they, they revamped the whole game to like start off from like this hub screen which is basically like a recreation of a computer on its own like unique os and stuff and they put in loads of easter eggs and it's like you can un unlock backgrounds and like a customization to put on your on your, your fake computer screen throughout the game like that's the new method they've used to like add the bonus content in a new port and it's so good uh, w when that comes out i'll definitely love to play that again it'd be a nice nostalgic blast down the past of Smashed. <laughs> also, Mr. Lamplighter from this game, I, I want to give him a big old massive hug. At one point, there's a puzzle where, like, uh, you're supposed to, like, go out and solve it, but uh, Mr. Lamplighter, like, like guesses um, answers for the puzzle, and he'll keep on doing that forever and ever. I want to see if, like, eventually he would actually get the answer, because I was like, I love you, Mr. Lamplighter, I want you to be the one who saves the day, because he's, like, the best of the most adorable friend. And I was so happy that after 36 hours of leaving the game running, he does finally answer the correct answer to the puzzle, and then you get, yeah, yeah, a little bit of bonus style like going like yeah you used the lamplighter you did it and they're like yes yes he did it he did it yes and i'll, I'll shove an image of him on screen he is also friends so i'm giving two friends for this nico is friend mr lamplighter like every design in this in this game is honestly like super friend like i love the design of like um the, the prophet bot and the, uh, the bird people i just uh, really good art style in this game i'm going really off topic next character who shall they be Oh, it's that one that Daisy likes! Yeah, Virgo from Virgo vs. the Zodiac. Based on design alone, I would have to say a farewell on this one. But based on what I've learned about this character from, um, from my friend, apparently she's like, she's got a lot more to her than it's, and it, it seems. Like, to me this design is just sort of like, 
generic girl character of some sort. I, I can't really, like, it doesn't communicate much about this. Like, I wouldn't have even guessed that she was supposed to be, like, a constellation person from, from Mr. Light. But apparently, like, her personality is, like, um, super egotistical, like, super villainy, and, like, she thinks she's doing the right thing, which is actually being, like, a villain protagonist. There's, like, loads of, like, interesting moral ambiguity and different routes to go through, and, like, she's, like, a, a, a manifested constellation version fighting against the rest of the constellation. And, like, so much cool and interesting plot stuff going on, but just none of it really communicated in the design. This could be any magical girl from any story whatsoever. I, I do mildly like when she has little wings on her feet. That reminds me of um uh, that guy from the Hercules the Animated Series. He was nice. He was my favourite character. It always bugged me in that series how the continuity was all messed up. When I was a kid, like, like they always said, like, oh, kids will never notice. No, like, if, if they change the continuity between the movie and the cartoon, co every single time as a kid, I would notice and I would be bugged the heck to it. Like, I was like, why is the Care Bears movie the origin of the Care Bears? And Care Bears movies too is an entirely separate of origin of the Care Bears. I'm like, kids will notice. Kids aren't stupid. And like, and then Hercules, it was like, like, oh, uh, like, he never found out he was uh, he was Zeus's son until he was an adult. And then in, the entire premise of the entire animated series is that. He found out he was Zeus's son when he was a child. These do not fit. Like, unless the last episode is going to be him losing his memory and, like, Hades also losing his memory, everyone losing their memory and resetting to zero. And also, he, did, he, like, he had, like, a friendless background in the movie. He grew up without any friends. And then in the, in the, in the cartoon, he had two friends. And I'm just like, I, as I said, I preferred the continuity of the cartoon. Like, I liked all the new characters and everything. But I'm like, don't just pretend like it was it was all in continuity all along, mate. Kids are not dumb. I'm going way off topic here. Anyway, continuing onward. Oh, this guy is long. This guy is long. Is there any way to like zoom out? There is no way to zoom out. So let's just slowly pan down this guy on my screen. Um, Samuel Dretz Dretz Sa Sam Jetstream, Samuel Jetstream, Sam Rod Rodriguez, Metal Gear. <laughs> That's a lot of noises. I, I, I sometimes I, I stumble over words, but Samuel Jetstream, Sam Rodriguez from Metal Gear Rising. I don't like him. Farewell. <laughs> I am sorry to all the fans of this character, but it seems like any character from from any shooting game. I'm not a fan of shooty stealthy. Games. Well, he seems to have a sword instead of a gun, so that's one point for him. And, like, he doesn't have a helmet on, but aside from that, he's just some person in a robot armor, and I don't know what to say about it. He is a man who is possibly a human. Yay! Stand the comedy man! Oh my god! I love. I I don't talk about my fandom for this game, but this is like one of the first like RPG get maker games that I ever played, and like it really inspired me to want to get to learn RPG maker. I've still never succeeded in making my own RPG maker game in all these years, but like this game was like one of my big comforts when I first moved into that like in into that um house in St. Melons, which I had like really bad neighbors and I got super stressed out and stuff. This game was like one of my first comforts I played. There. The first time I played it was like before that, but I, I, I was like nostalgically revisiting it during that time. So, like, Oh my god, this game, like, I, I think I played it, like, close to when it first came out. Like, oh my god, that's why he has two names, is because when this game first came out, it, it um... Cause it's exactly a Japanese RPG Maker game which got translated, which is so cool because so rarely you get to see like um, RPG Maker type games from different countries. It's always really cool to to get you know, that happen. But the reason he has two names is because when this game first came out, the the localization of it like it changed all the characters to Americans and stuff like that. It's because the localization was um, the first pass of the translation. It renamed all the, it 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 took like inspiration from Phoenix Wright but not necessarily the good things of it. it like it took the bit where like everyone becomes Americans now we've renamed them all to Americans we say it's an American town and like we changed the the, the the one like American character to be like from Norway instead and and like yeah and, like there was a lot of good stuff in it like, the translation is great but I don't think that was a good part of it I also don't think that's really something that makes the Ace Attorney games great necessarily like I do like the fact that like the characters have punning names, they change them to, to punning names that can be understood in English. I do I do appreciate that, but I don't think at the same time changing them specifically to like pretend they're not Japanese, especially this guy who's like wearing a whole Japanese kimono. Like the whole game was about specifically the Japanese comedy style of uh, Manzai, which like, and that's, that's na the name of the game, Cherry Tree High Comedy Cub. It was specifically the type of comedy was a very Japanese type of comedy. So like there was a lot of stuff that had to be rewritten in this early draft. And so I do appreciate that the, the com uh, like, the localization company they they wise up to it and they they admitted like that's okay and then they 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 released a second patch of a translation they released an option to toggle between 
between having the Americanized names and the not Americanized names, but still keeping like all the benefits, all the good parts of the translation, just changing the character names back and removing any situations where like they tried to like de Japanify it. And it was really cool. I I love the chance like I've played this game like three or four times, and I've played it like at least uh, at least twice in like both translations and both of them were really great and it was awesome it was so interesting for me too to, to replay it on both translations simultaneously and see the differences i didn't like record any of the, in any of those intros for the differences when it happened maybe we should do that again like like try and like um record screenshots of all the differences but it was really interesting like um like the hot dog item was like a yaki soba bun in in the original like, i was so excited i i going in i thought it was just the character names that changed but then apparently they changed a bunch of item names and stuff too it was so fascinating going right back on on topic um, this guy's Stan the Comedy Man! <laughs> it just makes me laugh as the most, like, silly Americanized name of all, but that's the one that kind of stuck in my head because it's funny. <laughs> I feel like maybe they went a bit too far in like correcting everything after because it meant that they were characters whose names were like puns or jokes in Japanese which now are not translated. And, like I feel like a similar situation like that if you like had a name and like the name was originally meant to mean something but now it, keeping it the same wouldn't make it mean something. I think that's a situation where it's just for to change it slightly. I'm not actually sure if this character is one of those names but Stan the Comedy Man is just so hilariously like T typical bad dubbing name it's stuck in my head forever but yeah this guy is awesome he's like um i don't know i first played this game and like um uh, oh, I, I, i'm trying to remember like the, the the two different names for every character but i'm, I'm blanking on this i'm only coming up with um the english name of the uh, the character in question but his son who um i, th I think uh, uh curtis was the english name i can't remember it was it was a long name it was like minosuke maybe was his japanese name um, i'll have to double check it and i'll put up a correction on screen but yeah i felt like initially when i first got to know what character i was like so unsympathetic to it because his dad is so awesome and, and like curtis's entire personality is defined by like he's a very serious man who uh, well not man a very serious teenager who like i don't want to join the comedy club because my dad's a famous comedian and like i'm so embarrassed of like how my popular comedian dad always making funny and endearing jokes and i'm just like wow i wish i had a cool dad like this like seriously like like rakataro is like the best dad forever i do understand like on a, on like a technical level, it's sort of the same as like peony from um from uh pokemon it's like he's such a cool dad but then like he, I, I i feel i end up feeling not sympathetic to his daughter who's like oh i don't want to spend time with my daddy's so clingy and like overly nice and i'm just like for me as a person who grew up with like parents who are very not nice i i find it hard to relate to the situation of like oh my parent is too like overly clingy and nice and pleasant and i'm just like can we swap? I'd like to have that, please. <laughs> but yeah, I do understand, like, on a theoretical level, like, in a situation where, like, you're trying to assert your independence and you're trying to, like, be serious and be independent in your life and all that, it can, it can become embarrassing, especially, like, if you have friends who, like, pick on you for, like, having a, a parent who's clingy and stuff like that. I do understand theoretically, but just, like, yeah, when I first played this when I was quite a young teenager, I was like, oh, I hate Curtis. He's so mean to his nice dad. He was a funny and pleasant guy and he welcomes everyone into his big old fancy estate and he's just like, oh, your friends are my son. Be, uh, uh, come, come, I'll make you a nice meal and I'll, I'll do a, a stand-up comedy show for all of you and then it's sort of like the protagonist is literally like the biggest fan of his dad and it's just like ah it was so cool he's just, he's just so nice I mean come on look at that design he's so friend like come on he's so cool I, I love how his, his design is like his face has got like all the elements of like a very serious character but then none of it is actually that he's got like the warmest and most lovely smile ever and he's just he's like I, I just the very concept of like having this character who looks very serious but is actually like super super silly to the point where his kid is like embarrassed of him being super silly it's so good it's such a good concept and like and also i just i really like like obviously as a person who doesn't live in japan myself i like seeing characters who wear like traditional japanese garments. i like learning more about it and all that because i'd never i'd never seen it i can't remember the name of what this particular um when it, i think it was a, 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 a hakama i'm not sure but this particular outfit he's had i'd never seen that in any other character in the game before it was so cool to learn about and to learn about uh, um uh, this this japanese traditional manzai comedy and stuff and it was so cool anyway ramble too much basically 999 percent friend for this character and like friend for him not friend to his grumpy son but also friend to his grumpy son because i do once once i learn more about his deep insecurities i do understand him it's a very bad poor impression of him being like no don't don't be friends with my very friendly dad Arr, i grumpled grumpled grump Anyway, moving on. <laughs> well, a lot of these are very tall. Give me a second. I think I need to change the size of my window. 
Holy large images, Batman! Nikki from Sleepy Sheep! I love this design. I love this design. Once again, I, I love baggy clothes. That's my favourite aesthetic. I love this design. It's so cool. I love this art style too. Like, seriously. Like a super chibified face with the big old wide eyes. I love it. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. You know what? I, I, I really like characters have like some form of like contrast to them. Like, in this situation, I have a character like the big floofy hair and like the, the big long straight, straight, um, um, uh, like pear shaped, um, hoodie and everything. It's, it's not supposed, I guess it's not really a contrast. It's like they're both like very soft and floofy baggy shapes, but like they're like the opposite type of floofy baggy shapes. And, like, and, like you, you have like a dark co colored outfit and a light colored hair, but like they're both like very subtle variations of that. Like, you don't have like a, a pure white hair, and you also, you don't have, like, I was, I've seen this before about. The, 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 the another character in the previous video I like when, when they do things creative with colour schemes like that it's like we don't just go for like the most basic option of like uh, like in your mind you go oh, I want a character who has like a big contrast I'm going to pick like these two most contrasting colours you, like, like, you pick like a soft contrasting colour like a subtle contrast an unexpected contrasting colour to give like a, a unique vibe to the character it really gives like um, well, well like a, a sleepy vibe <laughs> it gives a like sleepy vibe a very cuddleable vibe and uh, um, this game um, is one of the games that was worked on by my friend Demo, so I'm just going to throw, throw it out there now. If you're interested in this character design, I would love to check out that game. Go ahead and do that, because, like, seriously, I, I, I love and I love I love supporting my friends. But I, I have not played played the game myself, so I do not know personally very much about the character, because from what I've heard, I think this is a game in the Toho fandom. Um, uh, my friend Demo really likes those games, but they're not my, not my kind of thing, personally. So I... I I haven't played every game that Demo has made, sadly, and I'm like, ah, I want to support my friends more, I need to do that more, I need to make more videos on Demo, so even if I don't understand all the two who references, I, I understand that friend is good. And this character is very friend, and also my friend is very friend, and this character, I'm not sure if they were made by my friend, or if they were made by someone else who's working on the team of my friend, but whichever, friend energy, friendly, 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 woo. The vibe I'm getting from this is that this is a this is a, a sleepy and slightly sad child who who needs a hug and and needs nice peace and quiet and has gone through sad stuff in her life and is now having a lovely day because they deserve a lovely day and they deserve a comfy hoodie. That's what they deserve. Oh, the the grandpas are not the girl in the middle. Okay. Unnamed grandpas for uh, gate from gate on taste regulars in, to in these are Toho characters. Toho has grandpas in it. From like, every Toho character I've seen before has always been like look look like apparently it's, like some of the characters in the previous video of Toho characters they're supposed to be grandmas but they all look like like ten years old. It's so hard to tell anyone's age in Toho. And it's kind of surprising to see that like the male characters actually do have like aged ages on them. I don't know maybe it's just a quirk of the art style. I do not know much about these mysterious unnamed grandpas, but I would say their designs are definitely friend. I accidentally almost knocked my glasses off from like the sheer like enthusiasm I raised my hand going friend. But yeah, these are nice grandpas, they're nice regular grandpas. Not too much to say about them except that these are normal lovely grandpas that you would see everywhere. And I like them, and they're lovely, and they look friend. There is nothing about them that looks faux, there's no faux here at all. They just look like pleasant, ordinary, lovely grandpas you could meet any day, and, and uh, like, they, they look like, like, the one on the left looks like he'd give you a jolly laugh, and the one on the right looks like he's always a slightly grumpy and slightly sad grandpa, maybe, but, it's, like, he, he, like, like, they both look like they would give you lovely advice, and they just, like, deserve the best in the world. The one on the right does kind of remind me of one guy from Full Metal Alchemist, though I can't remember his name. It's not Havoc, because that's, um, that's, uh, the pervert guy, but one of the other guys who works for, for Mustang, and, uh, he was one of my favourites, actually, but I, it's totally blanking on what his name is, because he, he's the one who doesn't get very much plot presence in the, in the show, sadly. Despite being one of my favourite designs, I really liked this design where he had, like, the contrasting, like, the floof hair and then the, the different colour sideburns, it was good. This guy looks like that guy's grandpa. Or that guy if he grew up and, like, um, it transported into a new dimension and, like, got more of a story. I guess he's getting less of a story because he doesn't have a name in this version. Oh, poor guy. Every universe gets him screwed over. Next one is a really big... There's a lot of really big images in this. I, I cannot fit these on my... Yeah, I cannot manage to scroll to be able to get the top of the image and name in there. So we've got Miyoi Okanoda from Toho Lotus Eaters. From what I've heard, Lotus Eater means like a brainwashing machine. It's like a, a reference to some sort of story about a brainwashing machine, which is about like like lotuses. And I'm not sure, but I just know that's, a, that's a, the name for TV trope. <laughs> anyway, this design is like a really complicated and cool outfit, and I'm, I'm surprisingly liking this. 
I'm surprisingly liking this a lot. I will definitely, I, I'm not sure if I go like, like super favor or anything, but it's definitely a friend, like a general, like middle tier friend. Again, not so sure about the personality, as it's c kind of hard to tell when like, oh, wasn't they? they're not really similar characters, but like characters whose design comes mostly from their outfit rather than like um, varying body shapes and stuff like that. So I, I think this outfit is like, it's very complicated, but and it doesn't it's very complicated it doesn't necessarily like have that same like appeal i was talking before like a, a, a good bold color scheme that all works together some of these do kind of like clash a little bit but i really like all the little details even if it even i like the individual details even though i don't necessarily think they all go well together perfectly like i really love when the little the little buttons and pins have little whale tails and that's such a nice small detail like you have this you have the big apron with obviously a big whale on it and then you have a small detail on these little tiny buttons with whales on it and they also look like little cherries and it looks really adorable and then on the top obviously you have the big whale hat which is adorable i'm assuming this character is some sort of whale yokai and, and like, I just, I, I do really, really like, like, the subtle, subtle purple with, like, the subtle, like, greenish aqua white here. That looks really good. And especially with, like, the red as highlights on it. I feel like that looks really good. And if it was just that, without, like, also the blue and then also the, the green and also the orange and all that in that. If, if we just, like, if we just make some of these elements, like, a more similar colour to the other ones, it might make up for the fact that there's so many details in the design. It might, like, more cohesively flow together. That, that's a sake gourd, right? It's, like, um... Uh, the, the traditional Japanese like alcohol storage gourd thingamajiggy but that doesn't necessarily mean this character is someone who like has beer and stuff because I also I've heard apparently, apparently like in mythology there's like uh, a, a trope well not like a trope it's like a, a thing where like you have like uh, an exorcist who like traps yokai inside a, an empty sake, sake gourds instead of like having beer in it and, like, I think that's just like the trope like, like you wouldn't quest in, the, in those times you wouldn't question someone carrying around like a big gourd of, of beer and stuff like that it's like in like in like a, a, uh, the west like you wouldn't question someone having like a tankard of mead or something so I guess that's like, like a good way of like stealthily being an exorcist it's like going oh I secretly, secretly got this beer a bottle full of ghosts over here. <laughs> that would actually be really funny to see that in like in a western set and set setting. That's like a wine bottle, like a like a modern western setting, a beer can full of ghosts. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. But I do really like how like the whales, like the, the froth of like the ocean coming from the whale's mouth is like a, like a, a fluffy a fluffy rim to the hat, and it's like nice and comfy. There's a lot of lovely design details here. Just. I, I do relate to that situation, like, you have so many good ideas for characters, like, how do I possibly narrow it down to, like, which ones, like, I, I can only put a few of them in here, so I just put them all in there, and it, and it ends up, like, taking the design away from you a bit, and it maybe doesn't work so good, but, yeah, I do understand. Oh, yeah, the outfit, she does actually look like a tavern owner or something. Maybe that's what they mean about regulars, is, like, these guys, um... They come to her tavern, and she's like a tavern owner. I that didn't come to mind because again, all these Toho characters they look like they're ten years old, and it's really hard to tell everyone's age. So I'm like, is she supposed to be the same age as the grandpas? I do not know. That's a friend. That's a friend. It's a medium friend. It's a freedom mend. Oh, this guy. Whoever this guy. Is. I'm gonna try and zoom out because seriously, all these enemies are much bigger than last time. This guy is still. Too okay, I'm on the lowest zoom out setting, and that's what it took to get this guy in frame. Oh my gosh, he's tall. Klein Sieben from Ruby. Oh, I know that show. That's a show that's like um, all made in 3D animation, right? And it's all I know about it. And I know uh, like H. Bomber guy did a video about why the first few seasons were badly written. And then like it got better over time. And uh, there was some sort of tragic death of somebody who worked on it. But I don't know anything about it. I've never watched the show myself. But this design here looks awesome. Like, if all the characters, like, well, not all the characters, like, like if if it were more, if I knew more characters, I guess I probably would have had more appeal on the show earlier on. Because like, all I ever saw of Ruby was like, again, loads of pictures of like characters that look very similar, all around the same age, and like, um, stuff like that. It's like uh, I don't tend to get much appeal from those those sort of um series like again cause my preference in characters I, I tend to prefer like non-human characters like and like more unusual characters as opposed to like uh, things where like every like here's like 50 girls all exactly the same age and body shape who just have different hair colors and stuff no offense to this show like by by the standards of like what the show is actually aiming for the designs are all perfect and great it's just not what i personally like in designs but this design i do like this is a really cool uncle man he looks adorable he's got a big old round face he's got a, a floofy pring 
Pringles moustache. And uh, his face looks mildly grumpy, but he also looks huggable. And I love the fancy, the fanciness of, of his outfit. Like, he's got, like, a simple butler out, butler archetype outfit, but he's got those fancy patterns on the top of it. Like, those nice, nice subtle, subtle weave patterns and everything, and it's lovely. And, and like, the, the little highlights of the blue one, it's like, you have this outfit which is all, like, Again, I really like the appeal of like, hey, well, we'll take an outfit which is like very expected and normal for this archetype, and then we'll shake it up a bit with some some new and unique personality bits and all. Like, I love it, and it, it, like it says a lot about him how his outfit is so unsafe, but it has these subtle like bombastic parts to it, and it makes me think that this character is like maybe he's more than it, more than it, what seems to the eye and stuff, and like, but what seems to the eye is very friend and huggable. Like this man just gives me the energy of like a, a big warm toasty jacket potato, but like that but like feeding your soul i don't know if that made any sense but basically hug this man so much hug this man like all of it he really does just seem like the pringles man just came to life and became a magic butler and what more can you possibly ask this one okay this is the first guy i'm putting on on top of my faves list this guy is going friend fave fave and friend and i actually this guy is so cool he's actually making me kind of want to watch ruby just to see who this guy is even though like every other design in that show is not my personal kind of thing so yeah big big massive thousand thumbs up for klein sieben trinket from the legend of fox machina that is a bear I like that bear. That bear is friend. This is one of those cases where, like, a design that doesn't particularly appeal to me in any way, but just is really cute and good. Like, again, like I said, I tend to prefer more unusual designs. This is really just a basic bear, but wearing a cool armor. And, like, just the entire premise of, like, it's a it's a bear, but it's wearing a cool armor is really cool and awesome. And, like, y you can't fault it. Like, it's not, it's not the most original thing in the world, but it's also not a bad thing by any definition of anything. This guy is friend. Whoever they are, they're friend. I don't know if this character, like, the fact that it's listed as a character means that this is, like, a talking bear who's, like, got a whole personality and everything, or if there's somebody's pet or, or, like, something like that, or a magical monster of some kind. But, yeah, I just, I, I like, I like, even though this is just a bear in a suit, it, it's, it's a bear in a suit. You can't, you can't go wrong. Shenron from Dragon Ball! Oh, I'm sorry, Shenron, I'll have to give you a farewell on this. Like, it's just a dragon. He's just a dragon. He's just, like, the most archetypical design you can possibly get for, like, that specific kind of dragon. So, it's not much I can say about him. And, and from I, when I was a kid, I watched, like, a bunch of Dragon Ball, and I d still don't know anything about what Shenron's personality is. Like, Shenron just existed to be, like, the MacGuffin. It's like, like, like that's the whole premise. You collect the Dragon Balls, you summon Shenron, you get a wish. Now, alas, Shenron, in the... In the the great the great charting list of monsters you are possibly around the most bottom of, of all dragon friends also like there's like a million dragons in dragon quest who are all based on shenron so maybe maybe i'm personally getting more overexposure to this kind of design just because i'm a fan of dragon quest dragon quest over dragon ball sorry that's my opinion <laughs> Ooh, who are you? Ooh, Reckless Cop, Danger Armor from Set I Hero Project. Ooh, oh, I, I love this design. This is so good. This is what I mean about having a design which is like really complex, but like ha having a unified color scheme of like a good good things that come together not too many colors it really helps tie it all together like this has so many details but it has a few like a few amount of colors so it really ties it all together like if you have a, a design which has like like too many colors and like not much details then it works out if you have a design which has too many details and not much colors it works out if you have a design which has too much of both it tends to like like they compete and they overwhelm each other and it's like it's hard to like have your attention drawn to any which one of them also, this guy just looks really cool. Like, I am not a big fan of robots, to be honest. Like, especially humanoid robots. I'm not a big fan of those at all. I'm not a big fan of, like, anything in, like, the robo-sci-fi genre whatsoever. So, with all that saying, the fact that this design really appeals to me is, like, really locking out the out part. Like, this design is reminding me of a Mega Man Battle Network, which is one of the few series, like, a robot-based series where almost every single design like personally really appeals to me like there's so much like variety to the designs they really do a lot of colors and theming and like to make them fe seem 
Like, like more, more special than just, like, hey, we got, like, 50 identical humanoid robots. Like, and at least in the genre of, like, humanoid robots, you have an excuse for them all to look quite similar. That's why I feel like Mega Man Battle Network specifically is, like, better than the original Mega Man games in, like, having having the characters seem, like, varied, but also similar enough to be part of a, a cohesive whole. And like, this character just really appeals to me. Like, I'm not really sure what it is that's going for. It's probably, like, like the big round shoes and like loads of globes and stuff like that all over and like like the hair kind of reminds me of a what's his name chowd chowd from from like from like what was the one i i haven't played mail mega one battle network myself but i know about it from my friend nova and um she said that like um there was one the one she was playing like you could either have colonel or you could have chowd 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 and, and, like, this guy seems like both of those combined, to be honest. Like, all the best parts of both of those designs. Like, he's a cool trench coat person, and, and he's also got the hair and, like, the cool rival aesthetic. And, like, reminds me also kind of, like, Honchcrow was thrown in there. And he's got, like, like weird little tube fingers. Like, like that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I, like, I, like throw, throw in a few, like, less human elements. It's all good. I like it. I really like this. I really like how he's got a robotic trench coat. Like, oh my god. This is so cool. And globes. I like the globes. I like the effects on the globes. How they look like eyeballs. It's so neat. And it's, the colour scheme is so good. Like, like, a good, like, a red and a black colour scheme is such a good classic. But then red in the back and then flow throwing in like big yellow orange globe that's so good it makes a really good highlight like you have this color which is primarily like two colors and then you have a third color which is used sparingly like like right when it really needs it to like draw attention to like interesting and unusual parts of a design it's just this is like a triumph of like how to pull off a minimal color design i love it also i want his funky like like mega man cowboy shoes i love this I want the globes on my show. Like this is just—it's really good. I want to wear this. I—I I would love to cosplay this if—if if I had the body to pull it off. Because I mean, come on, if this guy is buff as hell. But yeah, definitely friend. Well, honestly, everything about his design is saying foe. This guy is probably either a villain or a rival character. But I want this guy to be my friend. He's so cool. I don't want him to be wasted on being a foe. Also, Danger Armor is like the best fucking name ever made. It's like future armor, but but with knives. I'll make my own future armor with blackjack and hookers. Actually, forget the future armor. Who who is this ordinary human man? This is like this is like is this everyone's uncle? Who are you? Wait, this is a Dante guy, the guy everyone hypes up. Who's supposed to be cool? Like, is this coat supposed to be red? That's barely even red. That's like burgundy brown. Is this like, is this like some sort of redesign? I could swear, like, whenever I've seen, like, I, I just never seen, like, vaguely know of from association. Because, like, I brought it up last time. It's like, I vaguely know from association. It's like, where, where, like, people have cameos and references to this character. Like, it's just, like, a guy with, like, like really, like, spiked up white hair and, like, a really bold red jacket and stuff. Like, this guy is just, like, with the order. This guy looks like he's cosplaying himself. Like, this is just some person wearing like a very ordinary burgundy coat and like his hair is just ordinary grey sort of and he's like he got a gun but it's not particularly like magical gun of any kind is this really what a guy looks like this is this what everyone's been hype about for so many years like like n I'm sorry no offense to people who like this character but I'm probably getting a bad impression of him based on like being overhyped I guess like to be honest, like, even the overhype, like, that's not a type of character design I like. I don't really like this, like, regular human man in, in a trench coat. Like, I like trench coats, but, like, you gotta have a bit more than trench coats. And this is really just nothing more than trench coats. He's got, like, the most ordinary, like, the most realistic, like, button-up shirt. And, like, like he's got a mildly hairy chest. <laughs> this just looks like a, regu a, a regular fan of any video game ever trying to cosplay as his favourite character from, like... It's not even, like, a guy who made a cosplay. It's a guy who, like, just closet cosplayed with like whatever he had in his in his in his like i doesn't even really, like honestly like with that thing it looks like he's got like two coats and he's kind of like sewn them together rather than even having a trench coat i don't know what to say about this guy except he just looks like like if i was if i was like a cis person like a cis man and i had more hair on my body i could be this guy in this picture this could be me doing a bad cosplay of dante i'm so sorry like if i was able to grow a beard this could just i could just shove on something from my closet and i could be this man <laughs> so de definitely a fair, like i wouldn't even say it. it's not necessarily like a farewell it's just like he's not a bad design he's just like an ordinary human being who doesn't like, like he doesn't look like a design for a character in anything ever. It looks like a human man. Like, this isn't even, like, 
in the genre of like video games where your character is supposed to be a normal man, even when your character is supposed to be a normal man, they have a bit more to like set him apart and make him like a spectacular normal man of some. This is just a human. Is this is this like a, a live? Like the only way I can tell it's not a live action photo is just like by like some of the subtleties of how the shading goes and everything. Like this just looks like the director shoved on a wig and said, "I'm Dante now," and just like walked straight into the video game somehow. So like motion capture taken to a new and ridiculous extreme. I'm sorry, I've had too much time roasting this, man. I need to move on to the next one. I'm gonna go like not necessarily farewell, but just like this guy is so neutral. I have no way of commenting on on him one way or another. This is not even a video game character. I am so sorry to people who like this guy, but like I would like this guy if I met him on the street. This guy is so, looks like I, I would meet him in college and he'd like be like my friend and we'd like like chat in the back of the like like the business studies class and like I don't know he'd be eating Cheetos and I I that, that, this is just a man <laughs> whoa who is this cool person oh my god which one is the characters of the witch if it is oh my god is this is this like is this a guy who like destroys werewolves or is this a guy who can turn into a werewolf because that would be really cool if this was like like you know what they look they do those cool because like, like looking at it it kind of looks like the character like the monster is coming out the back of this person's like trench coat so that would be so cool if that was true actually like oh my god because I, I love when they do aesthetic like, like hey i'm gonna draw like the character's human form and their monster form together but like in this cool design and like all like flowing in together in like a situation which would never actually happen in real life obviously because you can't be in two places at once but like Oh my god, if if I had two equally cool badass super forms, I would just stand in front of mirrors all the time to, like, look at cool. <laughs> I get some sort of mirror which reflects my different form and I'd stand in front of it and I'd be like, yeah! I'd pose for photos and I'd get this printed on porn every wall. God, I love the design of the most. I, I love how it's, like, it, it could be a werewolf or it could be some sort of bird character. I love... um. Now that is an aesthetic I really like for monsters. It's where like they like they stylize the mouth so it's like like I I like a crun crunkly like line rather than even like showing individual. Like, you can see like 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 have a teeth like like I you can't even tell if it's supposed to be a shadow or like if the character is like all like blackish red all over and like they have a teeth like flowing into their skin. It's like it's like, like like you know how like lizard teeth are. It's like a, they don't necessarily like have a separate jaw with separate teeth. They have like fangs that are, like growing out of them. It's like like no not lizards like turtles. Like turtles have like a beak type thing. That's what this is. It's like I love that, that like bizarre stylization of like combining teeth with a beak into this like ridiculous thing that never really happens in real life but you can see the basis where it's based on real life things and it's like I, I love the idea of like stylizing things and like it's like a car it's, it's like a stylized cartoony thing but it's really true and like that's such a good like element for monsters to be like like cartoony like I like, can see like it's got a dot eye but it's not used for cuteness it's used for absolutely cool badass awesomeness because it's like it just lo looks so like fundamentally breaking the laws of our universe I just love it I, I love the dynamic of this because I like I, I can't even tell if it's a werewolf or if it's some sort of phoenix or if it's, if it's both I, just, I, I love it I love I love the mixing like I don't know what makes me think when it's just two forms of the same character is because you have the mixing of like the blank white like glowing moon eyes combined with like like you can't even tell if that's glasses or if his character actually has the same eyes i just i love that aesthetic i love your stick too of like the moon in the background like placed between the two characters like the characters behind the moon and the characters in front of the moon but combining it together make it look like a gunshot that's like blasting the character apart and like the character is like r like the, the monster character is like rotating around the, the gunshot blast which combines with like the dramaticness of like the like the, the landscape seems to be like breaking apart and swirling into this vortex of monster and I just I I love this design and especially they did so much with like just like one color it's like it's all red it's like it's like black and white but done with red and also red and it's so good and I love it I especially love a bit where like the moon slightly crosses over uh, over the gun and like you can see that like, the shadow of the gun exactly lines up where the moon crosses over and it's it's so cool again another thing that makes me think that this is supposed to be two forms of the same character. If it's not, I, I, it would be funny if I like got it totally wrong, and I would love to like know what a relation actually is between these two characters, honestly, because that's just so cool. And I was like, like commenting on a human character themselves. I'm not, I can't really say much about them because like they are mostly in shadow, but their design again seems to be like this just shows how the same design can like be really sold to you of like personality, stylization, dramaticness, and like showing more about who the character is like when you sometimes a lot of these i'm like i can't really tell what the personality of the character might be but in this one i like this character looks badass this character is like like 
You, you don't even know what they are, but you get this great, like, sense of intimidatingness from them. It's like, what if a personality this character has, it either a character is, like, really powerfully good or really powerfully bad. Like, this is a character, like, in like, I, I'm hoping this character is, like, some sort of, like, a, a good character who has, like, monstrous powers and stuff like that, because I always like good monsters. I especially like when monsters are good, but they're also scary. Like, I just, I love, like, like, that's one thing, like, I've, why I really get attached to monsters and why I get really, like, pissed off at, like, the, the most generic plot of just, like, because I find it so genetic and comparing to go like, oh, here's a species of things that are always evil just because they're born evil and because they look ugly. And, like, according to one person's definition, because I don't think monsters look ugly, I think they look fucking badass and awesome, but like, that's just how it is. It's just like, hey, we have an entire species of animals who are just born evil and awful and you can tell because of the way they look. And I think that's such as lazy and like, like, this all the ways you can find a metaphor of that relating back into like real life, because like, me, I related to monsters a lot because of like how I felt as um, an undiagnosed person with autism and how I felt I was treated. I felt like I was a freak. I was like, the only person who dealt with these problems, and like I, I was like so inhuman. I could never possibly be like a real human and stuff like that. And just so I really like characters where it's like, hey, there's a spooky looking monster, but they're actually a really good person. And I especially like. I think it's cool. Like if you have a spooky monster, like you can, you can do that in so many different ways. You can have a character who's a spooky who looks spooky, but then you find it, like, oh, actually they're like totally unintimidating and completely fine. And like, or you can have a character like like this where it's like they are, they look spooky and they are genuinely intimidating, but they're also 100% good and they use their powers of terror to like terrify the evil people into, into like stopping them from doing evil. And, like that's the vibe this character. It gives me it's like some sort of like avenging angel type character who's a monster instead of an angel. If if you get like that, that so that framework like, it reminds me of like what's it? There's some sort of um, American comic book where they had like a a guy in a trench coat who was an angel with guns and he like fought bad people somehow and I, d I don't know because I'm not too much into like American superheroes but that's what vaguely this reminds me of. I vaguely remember seeing some sort of comic book cover that looked like that. That reminds me of that but with cool monsters instead of angels. Not that angels aren't cool but like I mean come on. How could how can you say no to weird bird wolf thingamajiggy in the moon? In the moon! Yeah, if you, if you, like, isolated this design here without that in the background, you would still get this monstrous vibe from this character, and it's entirely from the framing and, and showing the personality and everything. Like, if you took this character and, like, you put him on, like, a plain white background with, like, no dramatic effects and no, like, l deliberately limited colour scheme of only red and stuff, and, like, no, no, like, glowing eyes pose and everything, I probably wouldn't be able to tell him apart from Dantai, Dan, 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 Dan Dan Tai, Dan Tai, Dan Tai, Tai from Digimon and Dan Tai come from mind. I need to draw that now. I'm going white off topic because this made me very hyper of how awesome this design is. But yeah, like this design, like fundamentally, the costume itself, not particularly super special. Nothing really going about. You can't tell much because they're so shrouded in shadow. But the framing, the sheer atmosphere, like, and the combination of the two designs together creates so much intrigue. I want to know, is this person a cool werewolf? bird thing I'm a jiggy or, or are, how are they related to the cool werewolf bird thing is this supposed to be like someone who's fighting the cool werewolf wolf bird thing I'm a jiggy what happened here did they destroy this destroyed environment are they trying to save it is this like an abstract representation of their own mind and their conflict of like between their human and muscle forms I don't even know but I just I really like this and I, I'm really fond of like glowy mad scientist glasses as like an an appealing design trait. Again, like, mad scientists are, like, again, me relating to a character because, like, it's a character, like, oh, this is a character who's always bad and you can tell they're bad because they act weird. And, like, a lot of tropes about mad scientists are honestly things that autistic people have in common. And that always annoys me because, like, it gets to the point where, like, you see characters who have those traits even if they aren't, like, obviously the villain, but then people will treat them like they're obviously the villain because they have those traits. And the fact that those traits are things in common with what I have makes me feel, like, really self-conscious, which makes me end up latching onto the mad scientist villain characters and like trying to find like a way of redeeming them and like being so happy whenever you do actually get a redeemable mad scientist because I'm just like yay I'm not fundamentally broken yay <laughs> I this went off into a big old ramble about like self-doubt and stuff like that but this is just this is why this design is so good it's like it's a uh, like the real gunshot has been like shooting me in the lobe of my brain which has the self-doubt and the self-doubt is obliterated and like that is the environment that's being destroyed by the cool werewolf bird thing and I need to scroll on because I think I've spent like a bazillion hours talking about this one character. Oh! 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 I should have scrolled. Again! The problem with all these images being a lot bigger than the previous images, I didn't see there was a second line under here. Technically, he's both entities, but the monster in the background is the truth. Yay! I called it! Yay! Oh my gosh. 
All facts from Legend of Vox Machina, you have a really awesome true form. And a, a slightly, like, boring and bland human true form, but your personality shines right through and, like, elevates your normal man in a coat form into, into still being cool and badass. And monster aesthetic despite not even being a monster. Like, that's just so cool. Wow, I've almost got up to 50 minutes and I've barely talked about, like, five characters. Hawks from My Hero Academia! Oh, that's a show where I really like a lot of the character designs, but I never was able to get into the show myself. Like, I read the first few volumes of the manga and I was like, I was super hyped and I was super into it, but then, like, like the further it goes on, the more it, like, tends to, like, drag out with really long arcs and tends to have, like, more, how um, I was put it, like, problematic elements, to put it that way. It's a bit of a shame, it happens a lot with Shonen Jump mangas, is, like, they start off, like, promising, but then as soon as they bring up, like, some sort of issue of, like, literally any minority, the majority of the time, the, the opinion they're going to have is like, Oh, haha, funny gay people, wah! Or like, oh, sexism, women should all be like naked. She has to be half naked all the time despite being a small child. It's how her power works. And like, oh, we have this one character whose entire job is just to like, be the annoying pervert who sexually harasses every girl around him. And like, the, the, the author of the manga said it's his favourite character. That's why he never leaves. This might be consistently ranked the, like, the least popular character of the entire series and everyone wants him to like literally die like oh my god like there's like like the most hated character in like almost all of anime is Mineta from My Hero Academia oh my god just get rid of him it goes about it was so funny it's like that's like, like since I stopped what stopped reading My Hero Academia like a few volumes in like the only news I ever heard of it after that was like, there being a big uproar on Twitter because like uh, Mineta the, the the annoying like sexual harassment guy got revealed as bisexual and, like it was an uproar from the LGBT community going oh my god no no we don't want one representation in this way like take him back take him back for the straights <laughs> i mean it's like the worst possible representation ever to like hey we're gonna add like one lgbt character and it's the one everyone hated like oh like <laughs> I know it's funny, because, like, regardless of whether the character is straight or bisexual, he's still just a horrible sexual harassment person, but, like, it, it, it is so funny that we have, like, the LGBT community, like, standing up, like, like no, we do not want the, the, the sexist guy to be here. It's good. It, it gave, me, gave, gave me a lot of faith in my, in my community. I'm proud of everybody. <laughs> Anyway, back on topic, this does, guy's design is so cool. I really like his design. Like, My Hero Academia has so many good designs, but just, like... The rest of it, it doesn't really appeal to me personally. This design, I think it looks really cool. Like, it's, it's just a combination of a lot of things. Like, I think that works really well, like, kind of, um, um autumn-y colour scheme. Where it's, like, like pale, like, yellowy browns combined with, like, reddish colours. Like, his colour scheme, like, obviously he's a bird person of some sort, but, like, his design, like, it, it goes more to me, like, an autumn leaf type person. That's what his design gives to me. I also find it really, like, a good and interesting contrast of, like, um, how he's, like, he's clearly wearing some sort of, like, like, like complex sci-fi like, um, superhero costume, but he wears it underneath a regular costume. I think that gives a lot of personality to this guy. He's like, oh, well, I have, to, I, I, I do have to wear like this practical thing I need to do to like, I don't know, to his control his powers, enhance his powers, something like that to, to be safe. Like, he just seem to have like ear protection on. Maybe that would be necessary if like, like, maybe his powers like like flying at like supersonic boom speeds, which like would make a, a noise that like he would have to cover his ears. That's what uh, the vibe it's giving to me. Like, I mean, he has an ear shield he has an eye shield and like it might be something to do with like him flying like too fast and his body can't keep up I don't know but like, anyway the point I'm getting is like it looks like he's wearing like a practical uniform but he hates the aesthetic of it and he wants to wear like this, this cool and approachable cuddly uniform over the top of it that just gives a lot of personality vibe to this character or oh, yes I like how chilled out he is and he seems nice and uh, again like I mentioned before is that aesthetic of like having a character who has like a, a scraggly beard and then like big floofy hair and, and I don't know why that happens but it looks cool and it's nice and it's neat I'm gonna give this guy a friend. Uh, did I even vote? Vi vi I've got so carried away in how cool design that I forgot to be saying who's friend or not. This guy, big old fave friend. This guy, regular friend. <laughs> oh, I think I'll stop there because my throat's going slightly and I've I've been going for almost an hour and I've only got like one quarter of the way through. Oh my god, it says it's 36 pages. Oh my god, you guys, you, you've absolutely treated me with so many kindness. I think I'll make this one video and, and I'll split the rest into other videos so it won't be as incredibly long as last time. So, okay, we'll head off here, and the final verdict, like, literally every, like, there's been, like, only two, like, failures here, everyone has been friends, it's been a really good assortment of characters, oh my gosh.